In this video, we're going to be talking about the key schedule algorithm for the data encryption standard. So here's the documentation of the data encryption standard, which is abbreviated as DES and often just called DES. DES is a 64-bit block cipher, and, and like all block ciphers, it needs a key to encrypt the blocks of 64 bits that's given to it. And as we see in the documentation here, the algorithm is calling for a 64-bit key. So we have to keep that in mind, but later on we'll see in fact that even though the design here calls for a 64-bit key, from the perspective of cryptography, really the key size of DES is 56 bits. And we'll explain that later. Now, what is a key schedule algorithm just in general? For any block cipher, usually the encryption process consists of a number of rounds. Why don't we say R rounds? And usually each round of that encryption requires a round key. And the block cipher generally will take in a single key. And the job of the key schedule algorithm is to take that single key and to produce R keys from it, one for each round of the encryption. Uh, depending on the cipher, the bit size of the round keys that are produced by the algorithm could very well be different than the bit size of the original key. In this video, we're going to focus on the key schedule algorithm for DES. Since DES has 16 rounds, that means the key schedule is going to be responsible for outputting 16 round keys, one for each round. So the initial key of DES, as we talked about, is 64 bits, even though we're going to talk about later why it's really only 56 bits, but for now, let's just say it's 64 bits. We're going to take that initial key of 64 bits and produce 16 round keys, and they're going to be 48 bits each. So here's an example of where the original key length is different than the round key lengths. And one point to be made is the key schedule algorithm of DES is completely separate from the encryption and decryption algorithms. So if you, even if you're not familiar with the encryption and decryption algorithm of DES, you can still learn what the DES key scheduler is independently of that. So just as a little notation, why don't we let BN just be the sequences of N bits, where the each component BI is either zero or one. And we can think of these as binary expansions of integers. And the set of all those bit sequences gives rise to the set of integers from zero up to two to the N minus one. So with this notation, we can express the key schedule algorithm for DES as a mathematical function, which has a domain of 64 bits sequences and then it maps to tuples 16 tuples where each element of the tuple is a 48-bit sequence so k is 64 bits and it gets mapped to the tuple k1 up to k16 where each ki is 48 bits and those are the round keys and our goal of this video is to understand this function so the main object that's used in the key schedule is the p-box. Really the only objects that used in the key schedule are p-boxes. So a prerequisite for this video is to know and understand what a p-box is and how to implement it in code. So we're not going to explain that in this video, but I did explain it in a video on my channel called p-boxes in cryptography. And on that video, we explain this code right here. So this is the code that we're going to use to implement a general P box. P, capital P is going to be a list of integers of length M. And N is the number of input bits. M is the number of output bits. The purpose of this function is you take an N bit integer X, you feed it into the P box function, and it gives you an M bit integer back the output. The two important P boxes that are used in the key schedule algorithm are called PC1 and PC2. That stands for permuted choice one and permuted choice two. And here are the lists that define them. These are really uh, arrangements of the bits according to these lists. 
The other important P-boxes are used in the key schedule of DES are going from B56 to B56. The way to define these P-boxes, you imagine an element, a 56-bit element, the left half and the right half are each 28 bits, and then we rotate these bits on each half left by a number of positions R. And the DES key schedule will, will only use um, the values of R equals one and two for the implementation of the key schedule, but you could really define RHL for any value of R. And these might be easier to imagine or visualize as a arrow diagram, which we'll see right here. So this is RHL1. We take our 56-bit input. We imagine it into two halves. Each are 28 bits each, the left half and the right half. And then we just rotate the bits on each half like that. And we can see that the list corresponding to this P box is given in this manner. And we can implement that in Python using the range function and then casting it to a list. And then the plus sign there in Python just means we're adjoining those lists. And similarly, RHL2, where we rotate each half to the left by two, can be visualized with this arrow diagram. And here's the list for it, RHL2, we'll call it. And we'll Im implement that in Python the same way, just using the list and the range functions there. So here it is, finally. The key schedule of DES, is, it looks like this. We take in that 64-bit key. We first feed it into PC1. Out from that comes a 56-bit element. And then we proceed to feed it into each P-box. And along the way, we get our values of K1 up to K16. Notice in the middle there, we have KI, which is like the general key. So the input is denoted by K. It's a 64-bit sequence of bits. And the output is K1 up to K16, which are uh, sequences of bits of length 48 now. And those are the round keys. And these uh, P boxes RHL of RI, RI is either one or two for every single round. And here are the values of RI given in this table. Notice they're always equal to one or two. And really, uh, we could summarize just by saying R i is equal to two for all the rounds, except for the the four rounds, round one, two, nine, and sixteen, in in which case R i is equal to one for those rounds. So we see that we have a formula for the ith key of the the ith round key. We take in the original key k, we put in put it into PC one. And then we put it into RHL R1 all the way up to RHL RI. And then finally, we put it into PC2 and we get a 48-bit round key back. And here's the Python code that we can use to implement this. We take as an input a 64-bit key. We define X as the result of putting that value of K into the P box, PC1. PC1 is a 64-bit P box, that's why we have a 64 there. We define our empty list of keys, and that'll be our return value. And the, in the end, keys will hold 16 48 bit values. And then we just do a for loop through the rounds from 1 up to 16. As we said, if the round is 1, 2, 9, or 16, then we want to put the X into the P box RHL1. Otherwise, which is the most of the time, we put X into the P box RHL2. And then X is put into the P box PC2, which is a 56 bit input, but it outputs a 48 bit value. And that is the key corresponding to that round. That is the round key. And we append it to our list of keys. And then in the end, we have 16 keys that are made and those are the round keys. So here's a little example from a textbook we can just focus on the key part and we can forget about the rest of this. We take in a 64 bit key, it's highlighted here. And our goal is to write some code that produces these 16 48 bit round keys. So why don't we do that now from a blank file? All right, let's type out the key schedule algorithm for this. 
So as we talked about, the code for the P-Box is this, and we're not going to review that since it's talked about in another video. But this is our main code that's going to be used to implement any P-Box. Now, we also talked about using the P-Box PC1, and the list for that is right here. So the, the PC1, that's, that's going to be filled in later for P, right? When we want to call the PBOX PC1, we'll be using the PBOX function where the capital P is replaced with this list. And then the another PBOX we talked about was PC2. Let's put that into place. Now we also talked about the two PBOXs rotate halves left by one spot and by two spots. Let's also add those. And those are all the P-boxes we're going to need to implement the key schedule. And then the key schedule code is here. We looked at that as well. We just start off by taking our 64-bit key, putting it into PC1. And then we have our initial list that's empty. But in the end, it's going to return our, our 16 48-bit round keys. And then we go through the 16 rounds. If the round is one of these ones, we use RHL1. Otherwise, we use RHL2. And then that value of X is fed into the P-box PC2, and that is the round key for each round. So let's define K to be that key that's given in that document. And then we'll call our key schedule on that key. We'll store it in a variable called keys. And then let's just print off each key in that list. And we'll just need to change the key into a hex value. And then we can run it. And if we can, let's compare those to the document. So when we run our key schedule on this key, let's see if we get the proper round keys. And we do. We see that each of the 16 round keys are matching the expected value given from the textbook here. So that's how we can implement the key schedule of DES in Python. Now, just a couple more comments before we end this video, and that's what we alluded to at the beginning there. We said that although the design of DES calls for a 64-bit key, it's really 56 bits. Now, why do we say that? Well, let's take a little closer look at the P-Box PC1, which is given right here. And we notice when we zoom in on it that every eighth bit is ignored. So the bits 8, 16, up to 64, all the multiples of 8, those bits are just ignored, and they're, they play no role at all in the rest of the algorithm. And those bits, I think, are historically used as parity bits or something. But regardless, they are not used at all in the uh, influence of the values of the round keys. So from a perspective of cryptography, Really, DES is not uh, taking in a 64-bit key. The design does, but the from the perspective of key strength, it's a 56-bit key. It's uh, only 7 bytes, right? 7 times 8, 56. So that's why we say the block cipher DES really uses a key length of 56 bits, not 64 bits. Now let's just make a few remarks on the P-Box RHL. Let's just recall what RHL does. We take a 56-bit input, we imagine it in two 28-bit halves, and then we take each of those halves and move them, we shift them left by R positions. What if we do two rotate halves left in a row? So we rotate the halves left by R prime, and then we rotate the halves left by R. We can see that this is just the same thing as doing the single P-box RHL, where we rotate by R plus R prime. So RHL is kind of additive in that sense. And another little fact is that if we take the identity map, in other words, the map which maps the value x to x, it just doesn't change it at all. Then we have that RHL of 28 is the same as RHL of 0, which is the identity. If we take RHL of 0, that just means we're moving the halves left by 0, which means there is no changes at all. So it's obvious that RHL of zero is the identity. And RHL of 28 is also the identity because we're moving each 28-bit half over 28 spots. 
So it just comes back to where it started. And that's why RHL of 28 is the identity. Now just recall that we have a little formula for the ith round key, right? KI is PC2 composed with RHL of RI down to RHL of R1 composed with PC1. But now just using that little additive formula that we saw, when we compose all of those RHLs, we can just write that as a single RHL and just add up the values of RI, right? So we get that just to be RHL of RI plus all the way down to R1. Now, why don't we just call that SI? SI is the partial sum of the RJs. And then we get a nice little clean formula for the ith round key. It's just PC2 composed with RHL of SI composed with PC1 of the original key. So this way we express each round key as a composition of three P boxes there. Now, why don't we just add up the values of these SI and write them in a table? And one thing we notice is that when we add up all these SIs, the last value there is 28. So S16 is 28. And so that means that K16 is PC2 composed with RHL of 28, composed with PC1 of the original key value K. And since RHL of 28 is I, we can make that substitution and composing with the identity doesn't do anything. So we see that the last key there, K16, is really just PC2 composed with PC1 of K. And just as a final comment for this video, we should note that the DES key schedule is actually very simple. Because as we've seen, the ith round key is just a composition of these three P boxes. We got PC1 rotating the halves left by SI, and then PC2. So really, each round key is just a permutation of the original bits of the key. In other words, there's been no mathematical operations involved, such as an XOR or an AND, and there's been no substitution functions involved in this key schedule. Since the composition of P boxes is again a P box, we see that each round key is really just a single P box applied to the original key K. And so from this perspective, the DES key schedule is very simple compared to, for example, key schedules of modern block ciphers. All right, so that ends this video. Thanks for watching.